And welcome back to the road show version of uh, the TV show. I'm Jay Black, joined by Rhea Hughes and author Angelo Cataldi, <laughs> author of the new book, Loud, which is available right now at AngeloCataldi.com. Uh, looks so good. Look at that cover. It's fantastic. Beautiful. I you live from, I'm not lying, a truck stop just <laughs> south of Richmond, Virginia. If I could just take a moment up front if your children are thinking about getting into stand-up comedy, <laughs> just show them this podcast. Just just roll the video. Look at the light behind me. At some point, if a bullet comes through and my life is over, you know that it was a trucker that was like, there might be some meth money in the car. Let me just take Jay out. Uh, I think there's a point. movie about a woman in trouble at a truck stop in your future. Uh, you know what? I'm just doing research. This counts as research, everybody. Right. Uh, so, but we are that committed to talking about television with you. And I, I wanted to jump right into uh, something that was uh, a, a, a topic of much concern at the old radio show. And I, I texted Rhea about this uh, over the week, and she was oddly defensive of baseball. I think Rhea still loves baseball. It's a dead sport, guys. It's done. Put a fork in it. It is a regional sport that if your team is in it, you watch. But if not, no one cares. Eight million people watch the World Series. The lowest ever. There are reruns of Abbott Elementary that do better than the World Series. Are you wow. kidding me? Guys, am I overreacting or is this sport done and no one cares about it outside of the local fans? Rhea, you, you, you seem to think baseball has more life in it and this was just a particularly bad matchup. No one cares about the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Texas Rangers. They they had 70 million more people come to their games this year. Baseball, I wasn't real a big fan of the of the pitch clock. It worked. Game times were down. Listen, it's very simple. Name me three guys that you know of. You're a casual fan, Jay. Casual. Yeah. Name three Arizona Diamondbacks. Name three Texas Rangers. I'm pretty sure you can't, right? I couldn't tell you the name of their stadium. It, I, I, I couldn't tell you anything about them. They were doing great numbers when Bryce Harper was in it, when the Dodgers were in it, when the Braves were in it. There's no natural rivalry. There's no rivalry at all between Texas and Arizona. And another thing, what baseball was stupid about, you do not play one of your championship games on a Friday night. It is where shows and sports go to die. Yeah. You never do it. They had uh, game three, I think, was against the NFL on Monday night. You're always going to lose. Their are other, their other nights, though. They won their time slot. Now, they weren't going against the NFL, but everybody loses. My point is MLB can only survive with stars. And when the stars were in it, they were getting good ratings, like a Bryce Harper, like the Phillies. The Phillies was a fun story. The stadium was a story. Yeah, it was. Nobody cares about Arizona or Texas. Uh, it, Rhea, that's a great argument, but I'm on uh, Jay's side on this one. It's totally regional. I, I crossed the threshold this year because I've been a baseball fan my whole life, and uh, uh, more and more so when the Phillies are good. I did not watch a single second of the World Series, yeah. and I'm retired now with time on my hands. <laughs> I had no interest in it. If the Phillies were in it, obviously I would have watched all of it. That is regional. That's what regional is. If you have a team in it, you're totally into it, and otherwise you're not. Rhea's right. Star power will get you two or three million more people. But it's just not It's not resonating with younger people. The, the people watching this now are getting older and dying away. And baseball is never going away. But baseball's heyday is long past. Yeah. But there's a way they can do it, Ange. There's a way you can get the younger people in. And I'm not here to ever play praise Rob Manford. But I think I'm going to win you with this argument because it involves Mike Trout. If you remember a couple of years ago, Rob Manford said, you know, Mike Trout is one of the top three players in our game. And he doesn't promote the sport because he's not out there. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So Bryce Harper promotes the spark sport every time he's on the field. So right. there's a difference. I sent Jay something. You know, yeah. unfortunately, 
baseball can't get Taylor Swift to probably date one of their players. They need the to. numbers that she's bringing in yeah. of young women to the game. Two million, like literally the numbers, like 34 percent in teenagers, 35 percent in women who are around 30. You have to give the intersection that it's a must see event. And baseball doesn't do that unless they have the big stars. So they've got to they've got to fix that and get their people to be like a little. I mean, listen, Mike Trout is never going to be Bryce Harper, but you could be a little bit out there. The baseball is so old now that if they found a player to date a star, it would probably be Raquel Welch. Like, <laughs> that's a problem. But you know, Rhea, it's that the Taylor Swift phenomenon is amazing because yeah. it the NFL already has monumental numbers. Exactly. And now you got these people that don't care about it that are waiting for shots of Taylor Swift in the box. Yeah. And you want to know the truth? I'm one of them. I'm like, I love that stuff. I think it works. They need somehow, if there's a way to take a cultural thing and and put it into your game in some way, that may be a new way to get more people because it worked for the NFL. I actually have an idea for this that isn't break up uh, Kelsey and Swift (laughs) and try to get her to date uh, Harper. Uh, I would... I would take a look at what Apple is doing with the MLS. Now, granted, Messi came into the MLS, but the ratings have doubled for the MLS since Apple took over all of the broadcasting. Right now, you have 30 regional networks that are running baseball. You don't know where to go. I think at one point we talked about there's five different networks that you watch the Phillies on. Even if you were a fan, navigating that is difficult. I think if I'm if I'm the MLS and I get a couple more years of this, I go to Apple or some streamer and say, "We're your sport. You are you push us the way Apple pushed the MLS to all of your subscribers." And I think that's a way to stay relevant with young people is to get like if Netflix had the MLB, you would yeah. know who was playing Everybody would be promoted. That's the way I would go, not relying on some regional sports network in Arizona to do my marketing for me. Because exactly. yeah. that wouldn't hurt. That wouldn't hurt. They gotta they gotta update their, their act. And yep. I don't know that they will. As a comedian who's not updated his act in many years, Angela, I'm absolutely <laughs> affronted by that. Uh <laughs> All right. So you know what you don't need though is to have uh, Casey Bloys at HBO on your side for this. I sent this article to you. Did, did, did you guys happen to get a chance to look at this? Yes. It's, yeah. it's relatively insane. It, the, the smaller issue is not the big deal I want to talk about. If you haven't heard about this, the guy who runs HBO, who I think is a genius, he has put on some of the best shows ever, has created burner accounts, and it's come out in a lawsuit that an intern has filed against HBO. He's created a burner accounts to go after critics. I was offended we weren't one of them. Like, I'm <laughs> glad that we weren't on the list. Steppenwall, of course, was one of them, yeah. uh, where uh, they to defend his shows. And he says, I'm very passionate about the shows. So, of course, I, I wanted to defend it. Very childlike behavior from a massive corporation head. That's not the main issue for me. The main issue for me is the, the how, you know, you know, you guys covered sports for a long time and there was a, a statement. If you listen to the fans, eventually you'll be sitting with them. Do not yeah. listen to fan pressure. I feel like creators might be a little too online yeah. listening to what fans are saying. I kind of almost want to go back to a time when they just made the show and put it out and didn't respond to any yeah. critic, to any fan, they just made what they wanted to do, and it lived or died on its own uh, uh, reconnaissance there. But I, I, Angel, I'm curious, what do you think about this? Hey, as, you know, I, I, I want to tell you a little story. I think Rhea will really enjoy this. Can I say a name because I know where you're going? No, I'm saying <laughs> Don't you ruin it, Rhea. I want to tell you a little story about a woman named Barbara Botini. All right? Yes. <laughs> that name ring a bell at all to you, Jay Black? Does not ring a bell to me. Rhea is very excited about of that. Of course she is. Because Barbara Botini is the wife of a man named Brian Colangelo, who was oh. the general manager of the Philadelphia 76. I remember this, yes. And Barbara did not like all the criticism about her husband and about the team. 
So she started burner accounts, yeah. right? First of all, there's a word for that in sports, rabbit ears. You know, you're listening and now you have to reply. If you are starting a burner account to respond on social media, you are not worthy of creating television. And can I make it simpler than that? You are uh, uh, paranoid and you're, it doesn't, you know what happened to Barbara and Brian? They both got the boot because <laughs> of the burner account. This guy, I don't care what you say about HBO. I'm not as impressed with it as you are. This guy needs to get his act out. He needs to get his ass kicked right out of television. And furthermore, the minute the fan, the fans are going to write the script for you, what the That's fans ridiculous. say is what you're going to do. How is that ever going to work? Never. It never does. So you you well, want people involved. You want people like, you know, that they really are passionate about what you do wrongly or rightly. Passion is a great thing, you know, and the Barbara Bertini thing. And just for the record, again, I will state, I've never believed it was her because yeah. they would be divorced right. now. That's yeah. my only point. That's and a she got the blame point. for it because yeah. it's always easy to blame the woman. But so Brian just, blamed her, but it was really Brian Colangelo's burner account. I 100% believe it was. But wow. if you're, if, if you have a storyline, that right. you've hired like the best and brightest to write, right. write your story. If people right. are coming at you one way or other, they're still watching. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I learned, Jay, I it? learned that the loudest voices are usually the dumbest voices. <laughs> Did I mention my book loud? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I get it. I, I'll just say this as somebody who's written several lifetime movies. And followed along on Twitter as to what people are saying about them. It is a game of whack-a-mole that you will never win. Yes. Because what people are watching, the only takeaway I have is when I'm worried that I'm explaining too much, explain more. That's yeah. the only takeaway I have. Because they'll be like, well, what happened? I don't understand what happened. And it's like, well, I said it five times. I guess in the next script, I'll say it 12 times so that you right. get it. But you yep. can't respond to anybody that criticizes no. you like that because you're no. never going to win. It's it, it is a no. zero win proposition. You always lose when you do that. So, and I and Angela, I will say, Casey Bloys, he guided that company through the years that we love on HBO. So I'm going to give him credit for that. But this is a dumb move on his part. Well, what has he done for me lately? That dumb show, <laughs> the, the weekend in it. Remember that guy. Oh, oh. I, I, oh my God! Yes, that. that was him. Oh. Yeah. Listen, listen, there's a burner account right now writing an email to you, Angela, saying that it was a great show. Hi, Barbara. Good <laughs> to see you, Barbara Botini. Babs Botini. Now, no burner account necessary for this next segment because yeah. it's America's favorite segment, the British segment with Rhea Hughes. What do you got for us this week, uh, Rhea? It's a fun one. So this is called New Blood on Prime. And it literally is new blood from normally the stuff I present to everybody. It's not the, uh, it's a, it's a detective uh, mystery, not the older weathered male or female detective with tons, tons of baggage. It's two young guys. One who is of British Iranian descent. He's nicknamed Rash. I'm not exactly sure that's a great nickname. Oh. And the other is British Polish, Stefan. So they're played by two relative newcomers, Ben Tavasoli and Mark Streppin. Rash is a cop, and he's kind of a beat cop, but he notices something at a crime, so they kind of bump him up to detective. Stefan is undercover uh, of a fraud investigation of a shady pharmaceutical thing. They're, obviously, their investigations eventually collide. They've got terrific chemistry together. They're reckless. They're fun. It's, real, it's almost like a bromance, and the storyline is really good. We, we're all... You know, th there's tons of Netflix and Prime movies out there dealing with shady pharmaceutical companies. So it's timely. Right. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. Like, I watch a lot of these and all of the detectives are always wounded in some way. These, first of all, they're not bad to look at. I'll be very honest. <laughs> but they're fun. They're, yeah. they're, they're fun. They're solving an interesting crime. My disappointment was it only lasted one season, but it's seven episodes. It's definitely work. I've enjoyed it immensely. So I definitely recommend it. New Blood on Prime. New Blood on Prime. And, and I'll say this, Rita. I agree with you. Since we've hit peak TV, a lot of men with dark pasts have become the de facto thing. Yeah. And like me, Miami Vice, everybody just looked good, was hot, had a good exactly. time. 
Like, that's not a bad thing every once in a while to have, like, just good-looking people not having a lot of complicated life, you know, just enjoying themselves. That's what these two are, I think. And they'll enjoy the storyline, so I think it's fun. Great. great. And did you and Clark have a teen segment for this week? Well, Clark gave it to me. Uh, just to let you know, Clark is currently at the doctor's. Hopefully, right. we are not dealing with a broken foot. So <laughs> he just sent this to me from the doctor's office while he waits probably for hours to get that x-ray. Uh, it's called Rampage. It's uh, on Hulu. So it's scientists figure out how to remake an animal's genetic code. But of course, something goes wrong. And then three of the animals turn into gigantic beasts that have to be stopped. And one of the scientists who's trying to stop them, of course, is played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Mm -hmm. And if you want a fun movie that doesn't require a lot of brain cells, the, Clark just said it was fun. It was fun, just kind of, you know, very adventurous. I looked up a review. The best review I saw. So it was a split decision on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics, 51%. But the audience liked it, 72%. So Dan Buffa of St. Louis KSDK gave, and I read it by Clark, and he said it was perfect. In order to appreciate this film, turn your brain off for a couple hours. Have a good time because it's unexpected fun nonsense. I am an adult who saw this in the theater by himself because, uh, number one, I'm a rock uh, fan. Number two, I played the video game that this is based on uh, back in the 80s. And number three, when you have a giant monkey in a movie, it is very hard to mess that up. Giant Did you monkey. like it? I, it, the, Clark's review is perfect. If you go in expecting uh, anything except giant monkeys destroying stuff, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> but yes. if you like giant monkeys, and I do, uh, great movie. So I, I yeah. enjoy myself with that movie. Super. Uh, uh, all right, I'm going to give you my recommendation. V and I are on the same page. First, let me say, Clark, I hope your foot's okay. You're a nice. Yeah. Yeah. Want you to keep going with no problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the same thing Rhea did. Rhea had New Blood and Rampage, two fun things. I have a fun movie. And I just want to start with a question. Yes. When is the last time anyone said, boy, I had a great time watching that new Will Ferrell film? <laughs> no. A while. A long while. 15 years? Yeah. Well, the, the irony of this is that it's not really a Will Ferrell film. He plays a uh, supporting actor role in a hilarious, fun film on Netflix called Quiz Lady. Now, the yeah. first thing you need to know is this. I love Aquafina. Just goes oh, by she's me. awesome. Bria, yeah. This woman, just the deadpan expressions on her face, I laugh. All right. Crazy Rich Asians, right? Isn't wasn't yes. that like her big Crazy Rich role? Asians. She actually had a TV show for a while called uh Aquafina is Nora from Queens. All yes. right. This woman is hilarious. Yes. And she dominates this film. She's a shut-in type, so I could relate. And, <laughs> and and she just becomes addicted to a quiz show. And then she desperately needs money for her dog Linguini, Mr. Linguini. And um, so she gets the help of her sister, played by Sandra Oh, all right? So, awesome. Uh, Sandra Oh plays it a little heavy. She plays it a little strong. But Aquafina, she's kind of understated most of the time. This movie's hilarious. Then you got a ways into it, and the game show host, she ends up going on this game show. The game show host is Will Ferrell. No. And, and he's been it for like, I think it's an homage to Alex Trebek. Okay. Sure, yeah. What he does is every night he wears a bow tie and then he hangs it up on the wall. So he's been doing it for years. There's hundreds and hundreds of bow ties, right? He's hilarious in it because he's underplaying. He's yeah. not playing the, the over-the-top Will Ferrell character and he's great in it. And the whole movie is funny. And when you're done with it, I looked on Rotten Tomatoes, Rhea, it had an audience thing of like 87, 88. Oh, wow, that's good. It's yeah. really good. It's on Netflix. And it's like what Rhea said. It's light. It's fun. You'll have a good time. And you will probably not have to think any deep thoughts. Aquafina, though. Aquafina's. She's awesome. I love her. Love her. Ah, 
yeah, uh, she is uh, excellent. And uh, I wanted to say, speak it. This is a turn your brain off kind of show because, uh, guys, I I talked about this earlier in the show. I think it was six months ago or so. I said the Fall Guy, the TV show, the Fall Guy, was about a stunt man solving crimes, starring <laughs> Lee Majors and I believe Heather Thomas, who follows yep. me on Twitter. Which is a very big deal for me that Heather Thomas follows me on Twitter. But beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> uh, she, he, I said this is a show. It should be remade. Why isn't anybody remaking it? And lo and behold, I saw a trailer, and I sent you guys a trailer. I don't know if you spent the two minutes watching it, but no, I want to see the movie like today. The trailer yeah. was not Ryan Gosling <laughs> looks. Yeah hysterical in this movie it is great ryan gosling is having a great year he was ken in in the barbie movie and he plays a dum-dum who is yes. uh the best uh uh stunt man in the world emily blunt who we just talked about last week Love and her. loves emily blunt plays a director they have a relationship and all of a sudden a crime occurs and uh, the stunt man has to go solve it uh i'll put it we'll put a link to the trailer comes out in March. And I just want to say what we did this guys, right? We willed this into being, so you're welcome America for this. And but I will say it's one of the best trailers I've seen because I watch trailers and I'm like, yeah, whatever. No, I literally wanted to see it as soon as I watched the trailer. All right, but hold on. I want to bring up an issue here and I yeah. know Jay's not going to like it, but it's a big issue and I have to bring it up in the trailer. Emily Blunt is kissing passionately Ryan Gosling, yes. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm John Krasinski, who is married <laughs> to Emily Blunt, yeah. this is a problem. Yes. And yeah. Jeff. What about Eva Mendes? What? Yeah. Ryan what Gosling's I'm wife. saying to you that Emily Blunt to me is awesome, all right? Jet, it is true that one time you actually had a kissing scene. I did, yes. Could you tell the story of your wife's reaction to the scene? It it wasn't good. She was not thrilled with the thing. Now, that said, she actually had to call. Uh, I'm friends with Kevin Nealon. She called Kevin Nealon's wife to ask how she dealt when Kevin Nealon had to kiss right. somebody in a movie. And uh, I can tell you, when you're doing it on set, like, they're like you're looking like we're literally like a millis milli inch or a millimeter off screen. There's like a grip holding like a light staring at you like you're a dope. So it's like it's not erotic in the moment. And even <laughs> if you're with Emily Blunt, there's like 40 people staring at you. You yeah. feel like you're in middle school and you just played spin the bottle. It's not like it's not as fun as you think, uh, honestly. Even Emily would be like, yeah. You're ruining it for Angelo right now. Just lie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The next script you write happens to have an intense sex scene. And yeah. maybe for a lifetime. All right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And they go, you know what, Jay? This is you. You have to play. <laughs> now, how would your wife react if she saw her husband naked in bed with a beautiful woman? Uh, she sees that whenever she's with me because she's a beautiful woman, Angelo Cataldi. Done. Wow. I, I nailed that one. Uh, I <laughs> hope stuck the landing. Yeah, I hope someday this happens. I would love to see how that played out. Uh, one, <laughs> if I'm yeah. Krasinski, I'm going, you are not doing any more movies with Ryan Gosling. You have to pick. So that's a good idea. Actors. Yeah, no, I I do think picking ugly actors is if I'm ever in a sex scene, you're the other people are going to be trolls next to me <laughs> so that I look good. You'll be like, I want to see that guy naked, not the other people. Uh, How one much last did thing, you pay to be in bed with Jay Black. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> one last thing before we go, Peter Biskin has a new book out. If you're mm -hmm. going to buy one book, you need to buy Angelo Cataldi's book Loud. If you're going to buy two books, I just started. <laughs> Peter Biskin has a new book called Pandora's Box. Uh, if you've read, uh, he did Rebels on the Back Lot. He also did um, The Easy Riders and Raging Bulls, the story of 70s right. Hollywood. He's done a book about TV. It literally came out yesterday. It's called Pandora's wow. Box. So like I said, one book, Angelo Cataldi's. Two books, pick up Peter Biskin's uh, new book, Pandora's Box. I uh, started it, and it's fantastic. 
I so. love it. All right, here's what we got today. Rhea Hughes has a couple of good recommendations. Uh, if you're looking for something British, New Blood is available on Amazon Prime. Rampage is on Hulu, and that is endorsed by her son, Clark, whose foot we hope is okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I am strongly urging you to check out Quiz Lady on Netflix, starring Aquafina and Will Ferrell. And uh, the fall guy, what's going on with that? When is that coming out, Jay? Do we know? It'll be out in theaters in March of 2024. You can check out the trailer right now and right. enjoy it the way uh, Rhea and I both enjoy it. <laughs> yes. It's fantastic. <laughs> and you can go to AngelaCatati.com right now and pick up Loud. He will sign it for you. He'll curse in it if you want. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I will, as long as your check clears, I'll write anything. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, a uh, special thanks to Jared Clapper, who kills it each and every week with our social yes, media he does. and our production. Uh, please check us out. Rate and review us on iTunes and uh, re uh, subscribe because we're going to keep coming to you every week, even if I have to stop at a stupid rest stop in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> not killed for meth money. We will be back next week. Thanks, guys.